good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending. Thank you for being there. Thank you for organizer as well to give me the opportunity to to talk today about the power network mapping, the, a complex theme, I think. But last but not, last but not least, talk. I think I've been uh, enough inspired by previous talk today and. Since the beginning of the SOTM, I, I don't to prepare anything to talk about it now. Um, the the point of the presentation today is uh, is not to make you power experts. You won't get out and be expert of power networks, but the point is to give you insights to take a step aside to to explain what we made since ten years to map such a complex infrastructure and what, why we need it because it's it's done on purpose um, so the story you are about to be told is uh, an attempt to summarize 10 years of contribution in one hour it's a difficult exercise it will be lead to a pretty dense presentation so be sure we may take question during uh, some parts because it divides in parts so we, we, we have time to, to discuss, I think. Um, before going on a, a bit about myself, my background on what I've been doing on OpenStreetMap since 2012, uh, I'm volunteering, volunteering here uh, for approximately 10 years, mainly on infrastructure topics, power networks, weather networks, telecommunication networks, anything ending with networks because uh, the crowdsourcing is uh, something which deserves to be experienced in such industries, utilities industries. Uh, my professional background is uh, telecommunication engineering at first, but uh, I'm currently uh, contributing in a, a consultant cooperative that activist in France, uh, which is involved in the data governance of public services. So we try to implement open data, uh, open culture in uh, public services. So it's deeply connected it ends up to be deeply connected to utilities industries, which has, which are sometimes publicly owned. So we have the connection here between my volunteering at first and now my professional background, fortunately. Um, we can get in touch on Wiki, on Western Network as well, because I'm also involved both in mapping and tagging, which for me is very complementary. We should take care of what tagging provides us, mainly here in a complex topic, but also in simple topics we have on OSM. Tagging makes, makes the force of OSM what uh, makes it reliable and robust uh, through times. I promise it's the only slide of our business you see today, but it's necessary. I think we shouldn't go too much in the complexity, but a few points have to be made here about that team because we, we have to explain why we're doing it in OSM. It's the first point to begin with. So even in 2012, the energy transition has begun and the point is to get rid of fossil fuels. We have to electrify our usage of energy and it means that the energy transition will lead to complex networks. Not simpler networks, not more scarce networks, but complex networks. Electricity will be more obvious than before. For instance, in Europe, we aim to uh, switch uh, to approximately 25% of electricity in the energy mix to 55%. And it means we have the two situations I depict there. Uh, first of all, the yesterday network, the old network used to be top-down design. We have generation, big generation plants, and consumption place and networks lean between both, carrying energy from power plants to, to homes. Tomorrow it won't be the same. It will be more complicated. It won't be bidirectional flows. It will be you, you will have producer even at home. You will have more dispersed generation means, and it have to be carried out by transition by building more infrastructures. And these, is, these are the challenge we, we have to tackle. We have to have data to be, to, to, uh, to be the most cost effective as possible, cost efficient as possible, sorry. So uh, on, uh, more of that, you, you have to make that adopt by the population. You, make, you, you have to make people accept the transition. Uh, probably you, you, you won't be in favor of building power lines 
in the end of the backyard, I think. Many people don't want, but it will be necessary and you have to find the most efficient solution, solution for that. So we need data. I'm sorry folks, you won't have the fancy AI things to achieve such complex work without data, without basic data, without the data we collect here in OSM. So this, I won't get detail on every, every component of the network, but as the public, public force, we'll have to pay part of that. Obviously developers, the people who build wind, wind, wind farms, solar farms will pay for their connection, but there are costs for networks as well, and we need to find the, the most efficient solution. So keep that in mind. It will explain many of what we, we actually do since 10 years on OSM. The question is, OSM isn't di directly involved in network operation, but the question is, what can we do? What role can we assume? What are the things on which we are the most relevant? Because OSM won't handle the whole energy transition, obviously, the matter of hundreds and hundreds of economic actors. But the first part things, I think, it's the third parties awareness that I, I call third parties, is people who live and interact uh, around power networks. Uh, see these poor fishermen uh, trying to, to fish and put you himself at, at risk under power lines because some, some, some fishermen get, uh, every year we have death. Uh, of people who, who get hurt by electricity and the first thing is to 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 inform people of the presence of such infrastructures so i, I talk about fishermen but it's also uh, hiking because uh, power networks act as landmarks so we have to get data and even um, even sometimes workers get interest to get the, the data about the networks that not operators but people who are living around that infrastructure and their OpenStreetMap is particularly re relevant because we provide worldwide support of such knowledge. And it has been done for years, so we have great experience in, in that actually. The second case is to reinforce the operator's own knowledge. Operators is, is a complex uh, work to, to be done. You have to, to maintain the network, to invest in its development and uh, carry out power 24 hours a day. And as the complexity rises, it will need important knowledge, important knowledge of no networks, but important knowledge of surroundings as well. One example, uh, in France, we have the, the distribution operators who are deeply interested in our parking spaces, because when you have parking spaces, you have electric cars, and it's places which are particularly interesting to uh, be used to install the charging devices. So here again, the data sources for parking space in France is now open sweep up. So even operators, even network operators can be interested in such a knowledge where, we, where they can find the most visible part of the networks and the surroundings as well. And it's really uh, encouraging practice because we take advantages of the convergence of the different activities. And the third, obviously, is the sake of it in, in in OpenStreetMap, we like to be satisfied by mapping something something complex and uh, to to get something done. And I think it's here the uh, the, the a third uh, a third case to be interested to contribute on that particular topic. But it's a case for any topic actually in, in OpenStreetMap. And the opportunity is to use uh, the energy we we still have when we get busy on either the theme we can handle power infrastructure as well. So those three points indicate that OpenStreetMap is a relevant solution to, to reduce, to, to, to get accommodated by the complexity which is ri rising on complex ne networks like power networks, particularly in Europe. I want to make two disclaimers before going on because it's very important. Power infrastructure is dangerous. Power substation has dang dangerous places. You shouldn't get hurt. When mapping, OpenStreetMap won't encourage you to put yourself at risk when mapping. It's very important to, to obey the regulation, obey the law. Um, the power network mapping is not uh, uh, an encouragement to get to trespass on restricted perimeters. You don't need to do that. Uh, I'm not aware of accidents so far, so we have to continue like that. But it's not necessary. It's really not necessary to put yourself at risk. We don't need it to get the information we may miss. 
it's very important. Uh, so uh, we, ha we have to continue like that, I hope so. Uh, and the second disclaimer is called before you dig. Some contractors may use third-party data as they find without using the official uh, platforms uh, set up by countries to uh, get in form of presence of underground infrastructures and it leads to problems in uh, every case. <laughs> every time you don't use the official uh, platforms uh, intended to get the contractors informed uh, before digging, it leads to an accident. So OpenStreetMap is not suitable for that. We are not replacing the official platforms uh, that get you informed on time. So please, OpenStreetMap data is, is usable for uh, science, for preliminary studies, for anything interesting around power networks, but not for work planning. It's very important to observe that. Um, this said, we can go on about the, let's say, state of mapping your prior transmission network because we are at the state of map Europe. So let's have a look to what actually, what currently exists in the, in the database. So here is the, um, the most used render when it comes to, to power networks. It's open up from app, which is a different render than OSM car obviously. And you, you may already know that it. it's uh, set up by uh, Rose Garrett in, uh, in England. And it's a very relevant render because we, we see here, I, I'm sorry for not the countries, but you see most of the European transmission grid and you, you see it's continuous. You see how continuous it is across the continent and it shows the, the kind of determination we had to map it. It's the fact of 100,000 people here who got involved along years to get that knowledge and put it on uh, such a rounder. So, qualitatively, it's, it's really interesting to see that continues uh, across the continent, but I wanted to show you some, some figures as well. Um, what are we doing here? At the extent of the European continent, so including United Kingdom, Ireland, part of Russia, we have such uh, indicators. The first interesting thing is that the over, overhead power lines are almost complete. We see the curve going flat, which indicates we are almost done on such, such thing. Uh, but as I said before, Two phenomena are going, transition, first of all, and the interest, the raising interest by mappers to less visible features, like minor power lines, the small line going to homes, and also the underground power cables. And what we see on the two other curves is that the, over, the minor lines are still rising and the curves are kind of exponential. So even if we are done on big overhead power lines, we are not done at all on small parts of the network and the more dedicated ones. So please don't be shy. Go mapping and get the same curve as overhead power lines. It's, it's also important. I'll give you some example of how it's important sh shortly about France, what we had last week, like storms. Uh, and it's mainly covering the distribution network. So the part connecting ohms to, to the more higher part of the network. So it's, it's very small parts, it's very maybe difficult, but we see that the effort is raising. So people are going to map, map and map again until we probably done. So it's very encouraging to see it because it, it, see, it, it shows that uh, the power mapping is in something uh, which is currently successful. We don't have issues uh, about contribution. People are contributing on it without getting particularly encouraged. And I think it's, it's, very, it's very positive to see like that. The, the two other points about substation to so the technical sites which are in charge of transforming and switching electricity. So it's uh, always closed perimeters, uh, sometimes big, sometimes small in small cabinets. Uh, but substation are, are raising as well. Uh, and it's, it's really interesting to see that they are not only raising, but people are only also qualifying what their function is. So we got into details and people are putting some, some extra tagging to explain what the sites, what the facility is intended for. And the most obviously 
I think the most interesting part and the most um, uh, the most usable part is power plants. The place where power is generated is uh, 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 in constant transformation. We install solar panels on homes. We install wi windmills, uh, hydro power plants as well. So we continuously build new facilities, and this is the phenomenon we see here. Not only the building, but also the interest raising in the community, because uh, since uh, maybe five years, the number are going exponentially as well. We even see the step marked on the solar uh, generation, which correspond to the UK uh, solar uh, project of the month. The UK made a, an incredible work to, to make the inventory of solar panels, and we see it here. So you see the most, uh, the most important trends in that, in that process in Europe. And I hope it's the same in the, in the other part of the world, but it's, it, it's, it actually does. Uh, many, many work has been carried out on the uh, USA as well, South America, so it's, it's really interesting to see. You can browse open from app or any uh, other uh, measuring tool to, to see it. Well, is there any question about, what, uh, about this introduction? Is it is, is clear for you? A problem. So we can go with tagging. As said in my introduction, tagging is a very important side of the work. Mapping is important indeed. We gather data for the ground, but we can't do that and we can't do anything useful without tagging. I am deeply concerned by this uh, part of uh, the, the contribution because if you want to encourage people to make relevant things, and provide relevant data you can use uh, anyway, you, can, you, you have to provide uh, consistent tagging. I'm not very comfortable to contribute on, on topics where I can find usable documentation, usable tagging. It's, it's, I think it's very important. And we, we, are, we still have work to carry out on, on OpenStreetMap. We, we heard uh, this uh, um, uh, previously with the board, and I think well should be continued on, on Tagging management. The, the point I want to make here is to, to show you timelines, to, to explain the work that has been done since 20, 2010, um, and to begin with the power generation. I want to, to represent on the timeline what, what was the successful proposal that has been made. Uh, I hope I didn't forget anything in the, in the time span I, I chose. But it's, it's also true that something has been done before 2010, obviously. OpenStreetMap last of uh, 2004 and, and work on power topics started since. Uh, and we have more uh, uh, proposal that has been done earlier, but on power generation, we had three, uh, three points, three important points. Uh, which introduced the, the tagging, which are still in use about power generation, power generator and power plant objects, which are, has been introduced in around 2012, 2013. And even if deprecates some previous tagging, power source, for instance, the power source key doesn't disappear instantly from the database. It also need time to be renewed. Um, I I put. 2018 here, but I think it's even uh, later. Uh, so it's it's long-term work as well. You have to see that we got uh, pretty anticipation of what we have to achieve now. We need tagging that uh, has been set up 10 years ago. So it's it's very important uh, work that has been carried out by uh, uh, four people I mentioned here, but. That would be nothing without reviewers, and there are more numerous uh, on other people who are uh, supporting editors, who are supporting quality control about that. So it's it's still very important. And the last last proposal, which is very recent, and this year about solar panel tracking. So we we are going into details. We are going to to to, to get into details in every 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 theme. But this is this is for power generation. We also have power substation and. I will make a few more points about that because it's very complex. We have many proposals which got into details, some 
someone said it's, it's useless, but here we, we, we have a, 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 an incredible work to define not only facilities, substation, you may have seen, bigger, uh, smaller, but also device in, inside. And as the complexity rises, the energy transition is carried out, you, you have to install more particular equipment inside, more complex equipments, uh, converters, regulators, whatever. So we need, we need tagging which are defining which all those equipments are intended for. So th this is the work we 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 done uh, particularly in 2016 and 2017 about transformer uh, and on switches and so on. But it's it's really interesting to see. I want to to make more focus on the replacement we we made in 2012. The point was to replace a pure semantic work because we want to replace some poorly autographed uh, values. Substation into word is really one word in the dictionary. And power station, we, we, which we were unable to distinguish between power plants and power substation, actual power substation. We have a, a value which are poorly defined. And the proposal was made to replace it with a more defined uh, value. And here are the results. When we discussed it in 2013, someone argued that it would be a big change. We, we had actually about uh, 100,000 features for power substation in two words. It's, it's a really uh, important change in OSM. When you have to retag uh, such a, an amount of features, it's, it's really difficult. But we also see that once the proposal has been approved, the population of actual substation in OSM with a more uh, precisely defined tag, better documentation, people got interested in that and, may, and, and start mapping like they never before. The slope of the curve is, is, is more uh, uh, important, it, it increased more than the, the, the previous situation. How exponential it was, uh, however, it, it was because in, the, in, in between 29, 2009 and 2012, uh, we, we see that we would be pretty unable to match the current situation. And so the, the replacement with the experience, the experience shows that the replacement is relevant. It makes, it brings benefits to SM. It was difficult on the, on the time we decide to, to make the replacement, but now we have a way, way better tagging to be used and it's really use, usable. So that's the first important point we, we have to remember of. It's no matter the replacement is, the better documentation we have, the better tagging we propose, the better contribution will be. And this is a very important point. We have to remember it because even today, to match replacement, uh, maybe uh, refrained, we refrain from change, instead of trying to provide more usable things for the good uh, in the future. So I think the relevancy to replace tech is not in doubt. The, the documentation, the proposal has to be, to be challenged about this quality, about the method proposed to make the replacement. On the other hand, it's not desirable to have a change which lasts seven years. We have a seven years time span between the the, in the, the, the point on which the, the population began to decrease and the complete removal from the database. We have to work on lower this time span. It's very important to make the replacement more immediately as, as possible with the correct communication, with the correct uh, supporting uh, team as, as possible, but it's really necessary. The tagging we propose also allows us to make a uh, kind of mucopumping. I show you uh, one substation in Germany and the precision at which the contributors put the elements, many detailed elements according to the tagging we propose, uh, like the incoming base, the, the bus bar, which are the, 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 the horizontal lines, which are connecting lines and transformers, and so on. You imagine, you can imagine how precise we can get and uh, the accuracy we get in the business data. It's very important to be, to be relevant, to be usable, to have such a precision. 
and people are not forced to do that. No one is forced to get in such a detail and a level of details, but people are doing so. So when you provide usable tagging, when you provide good imagery, people are doing on their own something. You can explain they will if you ask them. It's kind of thing to remember as well. The third point I want to make about tagging is the, the lines mapping. You may have heard about line attachment, line, ma line management tagging, and more recently, line arrangement. And it's very interesting to see because on this side, we have many more values and keys to replace. It's the, the, the most, uh, the most thing we, we do on this is, is not to invent tagging, but to replace the way we used to use it. So with the many things defined on the, on the left, I uh, take the initiative to provide free proposal. And we see the same kind of curve like, like on substation. People were uh, not so keen on using to a type, pole type to map uh, line arrangement, line, line, line topology, but they got encouraged a lot with the new tagging and it's very important. For now, tower type and pole type are currently really decreasing. The usage of those two keys is really decreasing and it's very encouraging to see because we now provide, you'll see the, the force of this framework is to describe really visible part of overhead networks as well. When you have such a big tower, you are able to document the mechanical connection between lines and towers, the geometry shape of the conductors, and the, um, the topology of the line is uh, passing on at this particular point. And it's very important because sometimes even operators lack of this knowledge. Uh, so OpenStreetMap is carrying out an, 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 a work to, to make the inventory and make the qualification of dedicated towers. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's another good example of uh, what we can do, what precision and in, in which detail we can, we can get there. So it's a simple situation here because the line is going straight at this tower, no problem of topology, uh, pretty visible because it's big. But we are able also to document many more situations. We can now provide the wall, uh, the wall topology of the line and how the conductors are going. So you, you, you can imagine how it will be relevant for people who are around those lines, even free flyers play it. When, when you are in free flying activity, you want to, to get landing in, in field. When you have a power line, you have to know how the conductor are arranged at which eight where you can pass on. So it can be really useful even, even for third parties as well again. And it's a consistent way of tagging things. People are easily, it's more easy, easier to, it's easier to understand what it's all about with good documentation, with schematics, and something encouraging people who, who contribute on. Because the, the throwback of so a type, pull type was also documentation. Many cases weren't documented as, as at all. So we have to find such solution to, to make it more used. And it's the case. We, after two or three years of using the new keys, we also multiply by 10 or, or 13 the, the usage of such documentation for, for power, poles or, or, or towers. And not only in France, in, on five continents. So, so many people are are uh, uh, taking, taking that for them. But obviously, we are not able to, de to describe situation where it went out of control completely. So I'm sorry, OSM tagging won't be able to carry out such, such situation. The only thing we can remember of is the surveillance camera you can put on the pole, but the wires, unfortunately, will have to be cleaned up. It's not a problem for OpenStreetMap, it's a problem for, for network manager, I'm afraid. Last part uh, of tagging I want to discuss about is utility facilities. The power networks are part of the utility industries. The industry will provide energy, water, fluids of any kind to other activities. And we had a problem, but kind of problem on OpenStreetMap Street because we have different methods to qualify the, the same activity on many different features, on cabinets, on buildings, poles, uh, even markers. And 
for adoption to 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 make user adopt uh, and encourage people to contribute on such topic we have to according to me the same way of tagging when you describe a poor poll or poor cabinet or poor building it should be the same tagging so it, the the proposal has been made in 2023 so it's kind of recent but as of now we have we know the way to tag such activities the same way on many different features. It's not the end of the world because we still have to replace the tagging for street cabinets, the tagging for industrial land uses that would be existing way before we make this replacement, but it will be carried out at the end. And it's the most important part uh, to know the consistent way to achieve things and how every contributor will have to handle it locally because we have, we have to review many, many existing features. It's another problem. We can provide another method as well. Uh, we are currently uh, doing this replacement in France, for instance, and in many countries because we already lost the maybe 20 or 30 percent of the past usage of, of strip cabinets and uh, replaced industrial values. But it will last, I, I think, one or maybe two years to be to be completely achieved. But the, it's the kind of replacement we, we are able to make. We are still able to make such replacement, even uh, on uh, uh, 100,000 usage on, uh, on given values or keys. It's still possible, but it has to be achieved with proper method again. Um, another important fact on tagging, particularly on power networks uh, where, where you, you have the chance to, to find norms. There are international norms, inter uh, international e electricity norms. Obviously, uh, we can rely on to define to define tagging. Or open sweep up. We invent the uh, the technology that uh, may exist that may be already defined in, in norms. So I think we need an interoperability strategy. Tagging isn't already intended for mapping. It's first of all intended for mapping, but it can be used and, and put open street map. Uh, invisibility uh, way outside uh, because it's interoperable and it can be used on many other use cases than only mapping. And the three point I, um, I, I show you here is first of all the in international norms. Actually, the power tagging is defined uh, according to, uh, to, to IOC norms and to the uh, International uh, Electrotechnical Commission. So we intended to put some vocabulary, some documentation related to that norm, making easier the work for any people interested in reusing the data, even in outside of OpenStreetMap, uh, uh, more and, and more effective, more efficient. The second part is IT standards. Uh, it, ex it does exist uh, some some standards like Fewer or Linux Foundation for Energy. So we also make an a tremendous work on, on defining uh, data standards, data uh, models. So we need to get inspired and get inspired between each other. Uh, not only in one sense, we, we won't enforce international norms in OSM tagging. OSM tagging can also inspire some, some, uh, some ongoing works on defining uh, what, what the, the future norms of uh, some uh, electrical transition uh, that, that may be needed in, uh, in some years. That's the case for national regulation. The, thir the third point is m more difficult because it's local, it's uh, specific to each country, but some countries, like in France, may use OSM tagging to build their own local standards. We use, we actually use what we've done uh, around transformers and converters in 2017, we use it in 2021 to define the the French model for for data exchange between operators and contractors. And it's really useful because we already done the, the 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 thinking, so we have to use it. We have to get implemented in software. The result is once we used the tagging to build part of the French standard. It leads to uh, to development in QGIS because uh, some professional ask for uh, developing a plugin that supports this standard, and we may it may end up uh, in in more usable uh, more usability for for tagging even in QGIS and in professional uh, data standards. So I think it's really important points. Really, 
strategic point i don't i'm not used to get uh, to get uh, to, to to heard about uh, in our discussion we are focused on mapping it's, it's really important it's first of all mapping but it can also be the international standards as well is everything clear it's still still clear for you you're not lost hopefully so the third part is about the partnership we conclude uh, between OpenStreetMap France, which is the local chapter of the foundation in France, and Ededis, with the operator of the largest distribution network in Europe. Uh, so the distribution grid uh, serves more than 33 million of households in, in France in the light green area. So you see in France the situation is pretty complicated, but not as other countries, not as much as other countries, because in the uh, strong green areas, we have local operators, approximately 120 operators in France, but this is the biggest one with 95% of the population served. And the, 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 the goals, I'll be explaining the goals of the partnership, but what we have to understand is uh, such a company uh, employs around one 1,200 people for cartography. So they have professional mappers, let, let's call them uh, like that. And they also have, obviously, linemen and women who are working on ground and engineers who are working in, uh, in office, obviously. But they have many col collaborators who are involved in cartography and network inventory. So it's really interesting, more than it can seem at first, to get partnership with such companies because they can provide uh, highly qualified workforce for our uh, activity in, uh, on OpenStreetMap. So the goals was obviously to share data about networks and to explain how OpenStreetMap can help them as well. Because in such a partnership, three years partnership between 2021 and now, it ends up uh, next December. And we'll see if we can reconduce that. But the, one of the, the challenge was to find 12 million of poles because uh, the political decision decades ago in France doesn't encourage the mapping of poles. They mapped the overhead lines, obviously, but they didn't have the poles in the database. And it's a, I think it's an appropriate challenge for OpenStreetMap community to find 12 million poles. You can try it if you want. Uh, so, obviously, we have many different kinds of poles, concrete, wooden, anywhere. And in 2020, we already know that it would be uh, challenging and it would be useful as well to manage environmental studies because poles are sensitive to wind, they are sensitive to wind fire as well. And you may have heard what happens in Hawaii uh, this summer or any part of the world. When you have wooden poles crossing a forest which is in fire, it rarely ends well for the line. The wall got burned, the, the, the wood, the wooden pole got burned the same time as the forest. So you have to identify the, the part of the network which has the more vulnerable with the, obviously such data and uh, it can lead to a better focused environmental study and more precise uh, operation to ground the network, to make it underground, to make it disappear from the land landmark as well. So the main goal is to map 12 million poles, but if, you, if we get too quickly bored with that, we can also map cabinets. Depends on which, how, how fast we are, I will show you figure after. But additional point is also to share practices between, between mapping practices, because um, we, we have uh, something uh, to do about that. Uh, professional mapping, contributive mapping is really, maybe really different and we have to, uh, to get uh, some uh, experience in common uh, to, to make some advance about that. So here are the figures we, during the three years of partnership, which is in the light zone of the, of the graph. Uh, we managed to, to map, as of now, more than one million of poles, though 11 remains, actually. So we have also lessons to learn about communication, about encouragement and animation, how we can touch mappers to uh, encourage them to contribute. Um, one uh, interesting challenge is to put the correct operator as well, because we remember the, the strong gray zone on the map. It's not any of this, it's different operators. So we have to 
make it clear in the data. So making additional tagging is also important. The material tagging is not going uh, as fast as we expect because you see among the 1 million poles, we still have only maybe 85,000 with, uh, with uh, material, but it, it certainly would have been worse if we don't have a uh, complete, which is the, the mobile uh, application we use to encourage people and to answer questions. It's really easy to mark the material. So we have some some interesting tools to use, and it's not a dedicated tools, it's the tools you are using as well in other uh, themes. Involvement. Involvement is really interesting because you may tell me what who gonna uh, map some, some polls like that. Uh, the involvement shows that not less than two people each day mapping polls, uh, and the average raise at 10 people a day. No holidays, no weekend. Uh, it's it's the most important fact about crowdsourcing. It's it's it never stops. Uh, we reach a peak at 25 people one day. Um, don't know what happens this day. It's pretty unique in the time series, but uh, we are able to monitor such involvement uh, with uh, the, the website projectdumois.fr, which is a, a collabor collaborative uh, project we used to launch in the Health association and. It is dedicated for power mapping as well. So you can use it as uh, for for different activities, but it uh, it it relates to what Ilya said just before. On POIs, we are able to monitor with the right tools, and it has to be reinforced as well. Last uh, last fact about that partnership. We also set up a demonstrator to, so, to, 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 to properly show that all the data is, uh, is uh, available on OpenStreetMap. So we have uh, the website, gespot.fr, which is the construction of poll management in French, which is not only power polls, but also telecommunication polls. Uh, it's a fork of Open Info Map, so the same way as before to show some, uh, some data on the map with very detailed because it because it showed the, not only the location but also the material and the utility. Last part of the presentation, I'll be quick because we have uh, we are running uh, out of time. But what remains to be done? We have spent ten years to improve tagging, to make partnerships, to develop mapping of networks. But many things remains to be done. It's not over at all. The first point I want to insist on is the routing. Obviously, like transportation, like uh, any any other thing, we need routing for good reason. Because when you have the situation I depict there, a simple uh, T line, a line between two substations and one substation connecting on the side, we have to know what happens in the middle point. And it's not possible currently if we stay on what mapper used to map uh, simple lines with one showing there is 60 cables, like on the right and the one connecting on the left is only three cables you will don't know on which cables which cables are connected between each other what we need is a way of, of routing which relies uh, on uh, relation most, mostly we currently have different practices routing is not new uh, many countries already have relation for that many people got involved in, in mapping them even uh, years ago but we have to uh, acknowledge uh, some common practices because we had uh, an open proposal uh, by, by Shirley, which is stuck, uh, which has been stuck for years now uh, because two improvements are wished on this particular topic. Two things are blocking us uh, as we are discussing about what, uh, what is necessary for SMS infrastructures. The two things we want to insist on what is needed in the API is the relations member tagging it's it's uh, it's uh, it's needed because uh, on some uh, on some polls you have information related to circuits and as you can't tag you can't put tags on relation members it's not possible to aggregate such knowledge so currently we lost this information when we put a, we put relation we can't tag relation member and the second one is the downstream graph processing OpenStreetMap doesn't really support graph technology, graph databases. Uh, it's mainly topological relational databases, but we have to develop to get uh, use of, uh, let's say, uh, 
Neo4G, Genius Graph, or whatever, it's really hard currently to, to put the, the graph you make even between uh, physical poles or logical circuits. You can't, you have difficulties to load that in a database and it will, I think, having those two improvements of the API, with, uh, we will uh, highly encourage people to go over routing. It's a uh, thing. So to explain, the goal is to create relation about uh, above the physical line and to displace some tagging. Currently, we mix tagging, physical tagging and logical tagging are same objects, like wires and cables, like you see. And I cross them and put them in red to displace it, them in the relation. So it makes the, it reduces the redundancy uh, to put the information in the relation instead of the physical line because the physical line can change its properties along the physical changes, but the relation re remains the same, obviously. So you have to put the information in the right place at first. And routing will allow that a lot more than the physical tagging uh, allows uh, it previously. We have continuous improvement for taggings. I won't get so strong on that, but uh, classic things, continuous development for power poles, uh, for power plants, sorry, power generation framework remains to be improved because it's 10 years old yet, and you have experience of what could be improved, could already, imp it still can be improved, obviously. Power storage, which, which come uh, quickly in some countries, um, and also lo localized design of power supports because operators send them data, but some send them data, but we can't translate it in the framework we set up because it's not part of the standard yet. Uh, and obviously some, some wiki page remain to be cleaned up so quickly, uh, maybe by the end of the year or in the beginning of 2024, we have new uh, power and power lines to come. It will be proposed for discussion. Uh, one point also is quality insurance. Uh, we have to reinforce editors, validators to validate data that will be more and more complex. As you see, we have routing to come and we have uh, topology to validate and we have geometry to check against uh, complex tagging. So we have to reinforce the development for Osmos, for editors, validators as well, to keep the data, uh, to, to keep the user able to contribute on that topic. Uh, I think it's really important. In some editors, you can't check the affinity of geometry. So I can put, let's say, uh, uh, porous pora circuits, which is intended for relation on a node. It won't, it won't raise any error, so uh, less knowledgeable people won't, be, won't, won't even know they are making some mistakes. And it's really, it's, really, it, it's kind of problematic because it leads to um, uh, campaigns to correct the data, uh, to massive, to massify the, the, the changes after and consume time that won't be consumed if we have uh, useful hints for contributors. The last, last point, last but not least, but the very important point is to connect with other communities. Um, I'm not sure SM will get actually used with that, but in the power sector, we have actors to talk with, I talk about Linux Foundation Energy, but also some other kind of, of groups who are building open models. Open mod initiative is part of that, uh, mainly in Europe. Uh, some uh, Something about the beam and Fiware, we, which is also bling, uh, building open data uh, standards. Uh, so we have to share not only data models, but also practices, uh, code uh, on also enforce license uh, respect because some other co communities won't be, uh, may, may be not, uh, used about the, the respect of the license, knowledge of the license, and we have to explain it as well because the most uh, interesting our data is, the most uh, risky license enforcement uh, is as well. So we have to uh, make it match between the interest some actors may have in our data and the, the license importance we have to, to, to survey. We are building something that is seen from the moon. I think it's the last point of the presentation. I thank you for your attention and be pleased to answer a question if you, if you have. Thank you.
Thank you, Francois. Any questions? Uh, I think the uh, power group is one of my favorite sort of hidden away parts of OSM. And uh, it was fabulous when uh, the Open Infra map came out and we suddenly like saw it appear. Um, and I, I did quite a few of the uh, UK wind farms things. And so I sort of bumped into your community at that point. Um, was it sort of organized? officially or did it just happen because i know i think there's a is there a discord channel or something i i couldn't find it to start with and then somebody pointed me towards it and then there was like a really friendly group that you could get chats and help with and i was like it's sort of hidden away um it's it's a very good question because myself uh, i didn't organize that i, I only contribute to tagging i mean i, mean, I spent a lot of time but uh, it's true that we didn't properly organize, or at least uh, the appropriate way is deserved because of the importance of the topic. We don't have a place to exchange about power topics uh, in OSM. It's true, it would deserve more uh, time uh, to invest in because uh, I think many people are completely lost about that or even uh, remain individuals instead of forming a group. Uh, actual group. So yes, uh, I'm, I'm not using Discord, so I'm not aware of what discussion are going on there. Uh, I'm available of community forums, uh, but I, wi I will have a look because if, we, if, 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 if the opportunity is made to meet people about that, it would be really good, I, I think. I'm, I'm not even know maybe 50% uh, of the community involved in, in such topics. Yeah, but it's the magic. It's the magic of OSM. We don't know each other, but we contribute on the same uh, on the same thing and in a most consistent way as possible. Yeah, yeah. and it's a really good example. Yeah, it's like there are other parts of OSM that could take a leap out of the book and sure, at will. Uh, sure, at will. It's it's not uh, it's simply not uh, organized. But it, I hope it will be more in the in the next. Next day. Okay, we have time for one more question. I think you were first. <laughs> okay, uh, are you aware about some uh, imports of data of uh, power line substations uh, or antennas or for uh, TV or mobile? Uh, because usually are uh, strategic data for the country, so they doesn't they doesn't want to be uh, mapped and uh, released in open data. For example, uh, it's not related to the strategic of the country, but for example, the Ukrainian community asks us after the start of the war to not map, to not improve uh, anything uh, because it could be you know targeted uh, easily if you have open data. So, do you aware about some imports? Uh, you ask it off. I don't know. Yes, it, it's, a, it's a really good point because we have constantly this discussion between officials, between operators who say I'm afraid of being targeted more easily, like you said. Um, I'm, I'm not myself asking for imports. I think the, 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 the interest of OSM, the relevancy of what we do on OSM is instead to review many points instead of importing them. That doesn't mean that imports, I'm against import. Uh, they made imports, I think, in Poland or in, in, the, in the east of uh, European uh, community. Uh, but I think we, in France, for instance, we have the full open data of network. We, the map is published by operator. We have, we have the line, uh, but we can't import them because the, the, um, the precision is not good. So the interest of that work is to take the open data and find poles around and and replace the lane at, 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 the, uh, at more accurate uh, more accurate location, uh, but um, it depends. We uh, uh, if if you want to import something or, or, or obtain some data from countries or official to import in OSM, I think it will be fine. I'm not I'm not against that, but we have to take care of data precision. It's the it's the we have to provide a method to once imported, we have to uh, make make sure that the data is visible on the ground. It's the only 
precaution we have to be made. And I know the import policy can block that. But uh, about official on, on, on open data, uh, I think security is not a problem. If, if security is a problem, it shouldn't be handled by uh, hiding the open data. I think it should be handled by proper solution to protect such sensitive infra infrastructure because they are. Uh, but it's not by adding open, open data we won't manage to do anything uh, like that. So import with caution and ask for open data as well uh, as, the, as permitted by the law. Thank you. Okay, thank you once again, Francois. And we'll see you all back at four for the closing session. And in uh, South EU 2033, obviously, for 10 more years, I hope. You're hosting it in 2033? <laughs>